This series will basically be me listening to an album for the first time and talking about my, basically my impressions or my thoughts after listening to it for the first time. Now I've only listened to this album once, not twice or three times, just one time and I took some notes on it and I'm here to talk about it. And that's basically going to be my impression series, not a review series. In the future I will do a final review on this album or any album in the first impression series. These are just my thoughts, because you know, if you see my other reviews, I tend to change my thoughts over time. So I'd like to know where I am in the beginning when I first hear an album, to where I am in the future when I finally review it, so I can have this compare and contrast. So without further ado, let's go into it. This is After Laughter by Paramore. Now, the first song we got here is Hard Times. Now, most singles, of course, I've listened to before more than once. So those are the only ones that aren't really a first impression, but I will tell you what I thought about it first. At first, I liked this song. I liked most of it, except uh, that little that part in the chorus where it's like, and I gotta get, <laughs> and I gotta get to rock bottom. You know, I didn't like that at first. I thought it was a little weird, but I listened to this song multiple times and I really, really just started to like that. And now I just like the whole song. I think it's great. I gotta say, the intro kind of reminds me of uh, Crash Bandicoot. I, I read the comments, other people have said the same thing, so I'm not crazy, it's not just me. It reminds me of like, this jungle music that you hear in Crash Bandicoot in the island levels. I love the groove in this song, it has a great groove. It's very 80s, kind of new wave synth pop sound. I, I love this thing. The instruments here are so on point, there's so many going on here. And I just love everything they're doing with this song. I love just the whole, I think Paramore is going with this album. It's not, you know, their old classic sound, but I really appreciate this new sound. I really like it. So the next song is Rose Colored Boy. Now this is a new song that I've never heard. This is the first time hearing this one. My thoughts at first were that I'm not, I'm not too sure about that intro. The whole, you know, cheerleader intro where it's like, low key, no pressure, just hang with me in my weather. I didn't like it. I know that I don't like it. I'm just, I'm not really, I'm not all for it right now. When, when I heard it, it kind of reminded me of, you know, Gwen Stefani with the Holla Back Girl song. It kind of reminded me of that. And I know Haley is a big fan of Gwen Stefani and No Doubt and Paramore toured with No Doubt. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was the influence there. Right now, I'm not too crazy about it, about that intro. It's a little too poppy for, for, my, for my taste, but I really like the bass on this song, and I feel this song, you know, there are moments where it's just full on pop, but there are other moments where it's like a good mix of pop punk, so I feel like this song is like a good little thin line of walks between pop and pop punk, but that being said, I do think it's a good song. I think so far these two songs are really good. I have no complaints with them. Third song, Told You So. Now this song, again, was the second single, so I've listened to this a ton of times. Now this song, I liked it at first. I liked most of it, just like Hard Times. The, the one thing I did not like about this song, at first, I didn't like the whole, you know that part of the song where it slows down, it's like, throw me into the fire, throw me in, pull me out again. I didn't like that. I didn't like the way she said it, it's like, throw me into the fire, pull me out again. It was kind of like robotic and I didn't like it. I felt it was a weird change in the song. Now I listened to this song, I even took count. 23 times. By the 23rd listen, it just clicked. It all just made sense. And it was like, I love this song now. And that, that part, I love that part. It just, you know? And that's what I'm saying. It took me 23 listens to get to that point. So, there are a lot of songs here that I'm probably gonna change my mind about in the future when I do the final review. I just think it's, you know, interesting to know 23 listens for me to actually fully appreciate this song. But I love it now. I think it's great. The drums are great. Zach is back on the attack. The solo here by Taylor, great. I just love the guitar tone. Uh, I just love this song. I just love, love, love this song. Great choice for the single, for the second single. So now let's move on to the fourth song, Forgiveness. Now, this one's slow at first. It has a nice vocal melody. It's quite poppy. I will give it that. I feel that with time, this is one that I might start to like a little more. It has this nice little groove going on. Right now, I'm kind of like indifferent towards it, but I, I feel, I just know that with time, this is gonna be one of my favorites. 
That's all for that one. Let's move on to number five, Fake Happy. Now this song, it kind of has like this slow, sad intro, which kind of takes you off guard because, I mean, for the most part, this song, this album has been really upbeat, really happy, and this sad intro kind of is like, oh, wait, where did this come from, right? I love the lyrics in the intro, they're so good, but then as the song progresses, it gets more upbeat and then you're back into like the happiness again. I love the bass here, it's got this heavy like bass groove, and I really, really like this one. This is one that I just really like now. I mean, I, I like this the first listen, and I really like it. So we move on to number six, which is 26. It has an acoustic intro, and it's basically acoustic throughout. And, well, it has a, a sad vibe again. This is probably the closest you'll get to Paramore's old sound. If you're like one of those purists who like only accept the old band, then this is the song I recommend you to listen to, because this is as emo as it's gonna get. This is as close as you're gonna get to the old sound, guys. And if you don't like the band or their new album, at least give this one a chance. You might like this one, and then from that point forward, you can try other songs, cherry pick which one you might like. But from this point, 26, I love this song. I think it's great. But for you old guys, try it, just try it. Let's move on to number seven, which is Pool. Oh my God, man, I love the intro. I don't know what it is. They sound like if it's wind chimes or a xylophone, and you just hear that playing in the back. And it's throughout the whole song, it's really subtle. But it's, it's, it's always there. I just love that. I love that. Haley, great performance here. Great voice. Just the way she delivers it all. Really good. This one, this, this one's pretty poppy. But I feel this could be like a really good pop hit if they really uh, play their cards right with this one. The only thing is it just ends suddenly. It just ends. And um, that was my only thing against it. I think it's a great song. I think live would be better. I think live will find a better ending for it. But right now, I really like it, just that ending is a little weird. Number eight, Grudges. Lyrics here are great. This song isn't really happy, nor is it sad. It's kind of like in between. Musically, I just think it's great. Great song. And that's all I got. So let's move on to number nine, which is Caught in the Middle. It's got this funky groove, I love it. Taylor's guitar here is just so good. The drums, the bass, great, everybody's on point, oh my god, I love the chorus, it's so catchy, but I love this, you know, one line that says, I don't need no help, I can sabotage me by myself. Lyrical genius, I love that line. When I was listening to this album, specifically this song even, um, the band The Police came to mind, because The Police, if you listen to The Police, you know that they're really good at making songs that sound happy, but if you read the lyrics, they're actually really, like, sad or, or dark even. And I feel this album is kind of like channeling that. Since this album has like an 80s like theme going for it, the police really came to mind because this song, these album, these songs are very happy, but lyrically they, they come off as pretty dark at times. And I like that balance that they have here. This one caught in the middle, one of my favorites. I think it might be my favorite on the album. I'll have to listen to this album more than once. But from the first listen, this is the one that really just really sticks out to me as like one of the, the top ones from this album. But let's move on to number 10, Idol Worship. Now this is one of the heavier songs on the album. It has a nice vocal melody. The instruments all come together nicely. It has a fantastic chorus. Again, great song. I haven't been disappointed with a single song here. Now we go on to number 11, No Friend. Great drums in the intro, which is complemented nicely by Taylor's riff. The bass really drives the song forward in this one. This one is very experimental in nature. It's, it's not something they've done before, and it's kind of like this weird left turn that they took here, but I totally embrace it. I love what they're doing here. Haley isn't on this one, I believe. Like, nowhere to be found. The vocals are done by Aaron Weiss. I think that's how you say his name, from Me Without You. And you know how he does a uh, signature vocal like spoken vocals style singing. And so this song is done with spoken vocals. And I just loved it, I just thought it was so interesting. I wonder how they're gonna do it live. I'd love to hear Haley do the spoken vocals. That would be very interesting. But that being said, this is such a weird song, but I love it. It's just, it was so good. Complete left turn, and when the band does a left turn like that, I usually feel a little weird. 
But no, I'm totally on point with that one, totally on board. Very experimental, very good. Now we move on to the final song, which is Tell Me How. Again, we, we hear the sad vibe here. Haley is very front and forward in this one, locally, like very front and forward in the mix. You can easily hear uh, her voice, easily focus on the lyrics here. My only thing with the song is that, you know, it kind of just ends like in the other one, and it's, it's kind of melancholy in that nature. It feels anticlimactic, you know, because it's the last song of the album, you kind of expect it to be like this big finish, but it just, you know, it just ends, which I think live, they could uh, give it a big, big ending. That being said, guys, that's a whole album, and I think, it th I think it's a great album. I think they're doing a lot of things here. A lot of new things, and I'm totally on board with them. I might be a little biased because Paramore is in my top. Like, modern bands are easily in my top three modern bands, maybe number two. And so they've never once disappointed me, which is why, which is why I was kind of scared with Told You So when I didn't like that one part. I was like, oh no, this is a Paramore song that I don't like. But now I love it. So I love every single song on this album. There's some that I like more than others, but I feel with time, they're really gonna grow on me. As I've said, Paramore never has disappointed me, and I love this album. This album left me, though, with a lot of questions. Like, I'm questioning the decisions they took on this. Like, why did you do that? And why did they do this? I wonder why they did that. And I like that. I like that the album left me with questions. Now, with these first impressions, this is just my first thought. My phone reviews, I do, a. Uh, research and I like to look into interviews and stuff like that and I just can't wait to like research on this album because I love everything they did and I know that Taylor was more like this was almost his project mostly I just love all the things they did with this album and it's really like experimental in nature even more so than the Paramore album this is like you heard this this change in sound on the Paramore album but now it's like a further change in sound I love it. I love that this album, they're not trying to go on radio. It doesn't sound like something that, you know, pandering to radio, radio like a uh, mm, uh, sellout boy. But I think this is an album they made that they truly believe in, that they are they love, and that they're doing just because they want to do it. They just want to keep playing music. And I think it's a great album. Did not disappoint at all. So my recommendation is to listen to it. Give me your thoughts. Tell me what you think, and for you that just want the old sound, at least give 26 a chance and listen to the whole album and then tell me your opinion. I like to hear the opinion of the people, of the old fans who just like that. I like to hear the opinion of the new fans or the ones who just embrace all the sounds of Paramore. Thank you for watching my first entry into the First Impression series. I'm Grey Wolf, and remember to stay metal, stay devil, and stay evil. Alright, thank you.